Wherever we look across the globe, we find evidence of an ancient cataclysm. Why is there little to no records as to what happened? Something must have happened so abruptly to have stopped the growth of the ancient world and bring humanity to its knees. Despite being highly advanced thousands of years ago in many disciplines, including astronomy and maths, they never seen the cataclysm coming. So what happened? When did it happen? And what did it do to the ancient world? Wait till you hear this. Okay, so most of us are wrong for a start in our timeline of history. An example being the pyramids and other structures in Egypt are thought to be between 2,500 and 5,000 years old. But this is a huge understatement. In fact, most mega ancient structures on Earth can be dated back 12,000 years BC. This brings us to the time of the ancient cataclysm that scorched ancient structures and wiped out ancient history. All across the Egyptian region, we can see hugely advanced structures that at one point would have been beyond our imagination in terms of envisioning a project on size, scale, design, and imagination. There simply must have been advanced knowledge and technology at work in the very distant past. Were the pyramids built to protect the ancient governments from a solar catastrophe? Just a thought. So what happened 12,000 years ago? This is where it gets crazy. The fact that the cataclysm happened so suddenly in the distant past means it could happen again tomorrow, and we might not even know it happened because it will be so suddenly. In that scenario, the modern world of today would have the same fate of the ancient world. We would have no time to take cover or even acknowledge what was unfolding. But what exactly could cause this? Well, one being a nearby supernova wobbling the Earth and affecting our protected atmosphere, and the other being a massive discharge of energy from the sun. These solar outbursts unleashed electrical plasma discharges upon the Earth and triggered volcanic activity, earthquakes, fires, and massive floods as glaciers melted and lightning strikes released torrential rains from the oceans. The flood of Noah, as referred to by every civilization on Earth, could actually be an accurate reflection of history. Megalithic monuments, underground cities, and ancient legends fall logically into place as well as the reinterpreted Easter Island Rongo Orongo texts and the intentional burial of thousands of structures 12,000 years ago, including Gobleki Tepe complex in Turkey. History could repeat itself with a coronal mass ejection powerful enough to devastate modern society. This idea opens a new view to the origins of civilization, the truths beyond ancient wisdom, and the dynamics of the planet we live on. Strangely, ancient buildings, monuments, and colossi face 20 degrees of due east. This suggests that before the cataclysm, the Earth may in fact have been perfectly vertical rather than tilted on its axis. Does that not just blow your mind? The Karnak region also shows thousands of stoneworks where they were flash heated and causing the core to expand by a possible coronal mass ejection from the sun. This idea is further supported by the sudden disappearance of almost every civilization across the globe. Humanity were set back uncountable years as a state of survival for the few left was now a factor. But life prevailed, as you know, and we will continue to prevail in some capacity on Earth until the end of the Earth as we know it. Within every one of us, there is a fear the world could end. We constantly look to the sky in anticipation of solar events. We try to understand the cosmos. In fact, we are obsessed. This could be the result of a collective trauma that was unleashed into society all those years ago. We are all the descendants of the survivors, therefore, within every one of us, there is a sense of impending doom, something like that anyway. What do you guys think of the ancient cataclysm that wiped out history around 12,000 years ago? Comment below and please follow our Twitter feed so you can keep up to date with our videos. Thanks for watching. And this actually, I first came across this in my studies of ancient cultures when I started studying prehistory. In fact, there's 250 people, nations, peoples around the world that have a flood myth, that have a story of a great, great cataclysm. So when you have something that's consistent at that, it seems to be, besides, I believe that all myths are based on a true event in actual time and space anyway. So that it seems to be a consistent idea of a cataclysm. Now, a lot of Egyptologists and local archaeologists in the area think it was a local event which became the Bible flood in the in Torah, the Old Testament. Something happened around 4,000 BC in the Mediterranean. They think this is obvious, and then Santorini, 1400 BC. These are the events that's recorded. But what clearly seems to be is they're talking about a worldwide cataclysm, and these events were not. So I lean very strongly to the work of my good friend and author. I highly recommend Barbara Hanclow. She pub when she was a publisher of Baron Company. She published a book in the late 90s called. 
Cataclysm 9500 BC by two British scientists and authors, Allen and Dallaire. They postulated that there was a worldwide cataclysmic event happened around 11,500 years ago and presented massive amounts of scientific and geological anthropological evidence. Barbara took that up, wrote a book on her own called Catastrophobia, dealing with the fact that there seems to be a collective trauma in modern human beings about catastrophe. She leaned heavily on the work of Emanuel Velikovsky, who wrote some classic books in the 50s called Ages in Collision, Worlds in Chaos. Well, he predicted that the, he actually said he thought Venus was involved, that there had been some cataclysm, and he was a Freudian psychoanalyst, so he claimed it had coll left a collective trauma in humanity. I think that's one of Barbara's great books. She republished it last year as Awakening the Planetary Mind, updating it with what we now call the Vela Supernova, V-E-L-A, that a supernova occurred in space between the years 14,000 and 11,000 years ago, which may have greatly impacted our whole entire solar system. We know for a fact that Venus, is, uh, that Uranus, excuse me, Uranus is totally on its side. That is not natural. It is not upright. And our Earth has a tilt, wobble, which gives the precession of equinoxes, the whole field of astrology, that's 23 and a half degrees. Well, they, Alan and Dallaire are stating that this was a recent event, that something caused the Earth to actually break on its orbit, wobble, change the seasons, change the events. Again, I recommend people highly re read these books. There's a massive amount of evidence of that. I embraced this theory, and I looked all throughout the sites that I went with for Hakim to see evidence of this. And every site that we went to, especially recorded in my first book, The Land of Osiris, the Boo Wizard sites, we see massive evidence of cataclysm, evidence of things happening. So what you're seeing behind me, we say these structures are built well over 12,000 years ago, but what we see behind us is evidence of that cataclysmic event. As has been said, all the casing stones are almost all off the middle pyramid behind us, which Hakim stated was the first pyramid, the original pyramid built on the Giza Plateau. It is on the highest point of the plateau, is the one directly behind me, and it still has its casing stones just at the top. We go to the Great Pyramid, all the casing stones are gone except just some on the north face, some on the west face. So what caused that? This has not obviously been quarried. It is explained by the Egyptologists that all oh, the later groups came in, all the different cultures we talk about, particularly the Arab Muslim culture, attacked the pyramids. And while we know stones from the pyramid have been used for mosques, for other structures like this, the citadel of Salah Hadin, but they didn't quarry these pyramids. As has been said by you yourself have said, they didn't climb up there with crowbars and t evenly take off these stones. The cataclysm shook the whole grid line. We see at the site, the northern border of Abu Ruwash, that pyramid blew from the inside out. Has been quarried, yes, but that, the explosion, the cataclysm, is what's called that. We see massive evidence. We could go on here for hours talking about the evidence of an explosion inside the Great Pyramid. We are not the only ones, Chris Dunn and myself, to have mentioned this. Another author has mentioned Some Japanese mentioned it. It seems like something drastic happened inside the Great Pyramid. The walls of the, of the King's Chamber are not ra its normal rose granite. It is blackened. The box, the sonic resonance box that is in the King's Chamber is blackened a darker color than its natural rose quartz granite. The upper wall of the King's, of the King's Chamber, discovered by Chris Dunn in 1999 when he was being videoed in there and they shot floodlights on it, is granite, not limestone. No Egyptologist has ever, ever discussed this or suggested this. The whole upper wall of the Grand Gallery is rose granite, greatly blackened. I have scientists, chemists, physicists waiting that if we could get a sample of that wall, we could determine exactly what heat, exactly what chemical process, physiochemical process caused that to blacken. But there's no doubt that there was an explosion, we think a hydrogen gas explosion, inside the Great Pyramid. So there's massive evidence of this cataclysm. Every site we go, every site, particularly the Boo Wizard sites here, we have taken our group to, you see evidence of cataclysm. Massive boulders and stones thrown around, class. temples exploded out, not quarried. Quarried, if they were quarried, the stones are still there. If they were quarried, why didn't they take all the stones? Evidence at the Bent Pyramid, which shows its corners blown off, but still has its casing stones on it. Explanation by Egyptologists, it was quarried. Sure, you attack the corners, it's the easiest part of a pyramid to, to uh, uh, quarry, but why did they not take the stones? The stones are still lying around. If quarried, they would have used the stone. Blown off. The weakest point of a pyramid is the, the corners, that's what blew off, casing stones still on. Every site massive evidence of this cataclysm. It is not a theory to me anymore. I accept it that there was this massive event. There are different explanations. Dr. Robert Schock believes it was severe solar events. We think the solar events were a byproduct of the, of the Vela Supernova. All added. Many different theories. All comes down to a, a massive 
worldwide cataclysmic event around this time period, 14,000 to 11,000 years ago, impacted all the cultures, perhaps as many as 80% of humanity might have been wiped out. The 20% that survived went back to a survival stage, rebuilt civilization, took thousands of years, but carried that collective trauma, which is recorded in the mythologies of all peoples. You listen to all Native American mythology, talks about a great event. The Mayan mythology, Aztec mythology, Olmec mythology, talks about a great event. And then what we have is the age where suddenly we become obsessed with calendars, predicting time, and obsession with equinoxes, solstices, and predicting eclipses. All the megalithic sites we see called post-cataclysmic, meaning less than 12,000 years ago, like Stonehenge, like Gobletli Tepli, all of these great sites are all oriented to equinoxes, solstices, because it was predictive. They are not pre-cataclysmic. What we see behind us is pre-cataclysmic. It's not oriented to any star systems. We reject the idea of archaeo astronomy. Hakim said the only star alignment for the Great Pyramid was the pole star when it was built, and he, when it was designed. And he said the pole star was Polaris. Polaris is supposed to be coming our pole star again. That would make it two processions back, 26 times 2. That's how Hakim game gave a date for the Sphinx of 54,000 years. And the pyramid aligned when the Polaris with the star would be at least 26,000 years ago when it was designed. I say 15,000 years ago, the, Hogi, the Hogbu land of Osiris gridline was operating fully functional machines. The cataclysm changed everything. It still produces infrasound, still has a spiritual effect on everybody. It is still a machine, but not as it once was, fully producing so many different types of energy. The cataclysm basically ended the Giza power plant.